Hey, what's up everybody? Adam here. Welcome back to another SketchUp for Landscape Design video. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about contour lines and how to approach them if you get a plan that has contours on it and how to think about where to begin with those. I have a project here that I've been chipping away at and I have a plan with contour lines. So I want to take a look at these contours here. Um, I have a, a lot of elevations going on. The plan itself looks pretty busy, but it's really not. It's really simple. So um, the first thing that I would generally look at when I'm looking at something like this is where are the flat areas. I want to understand the levels, especially for the hardscape stuff, because generally, unlike some other software, I would recommend that you build your hard surface elements first. If you're planning something from scratch and you're designing something in sketch, up, then it, you can conceptualize, um, you know, based on whatever your zip level, your, your laser level, whatever those elevations are, and kind of figure out exactly how to deal with the slope. But you don't need to necessarily come and, and recreate that terrain right away in SketchUp. If you understand how to create contour lines, it's always a good idea to do that to help with design. Um, contour lines basically allow you to figure out what the slope's doing in 2D. A lot of what recreating contour lines is for me as a designer is useful at the 2D when I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the base map and I'm trying to understand where am I going to tie my new grade, my construction zone, all that grade in with the existing surrounding grade, right? But once I get into to SketchUp and start modeling, I'm more focused on the hard surface areas, right? I want to get the hardscape in. I want to know, you know, how many steps I need. I don't necessarily need to model the terrain to figure that out. Maybe that's just from experience, but I generally think that it's good practice to, to just build our flat areas as our levels, right? So we, we might have a level stepping out of the French doors in the back of the house that step down onto a patio. We might need some steps down onto that. That might be up too high for the way that the yard's falling. Then we might need a second level, things like that. So just kind of thinking about where our flat zones are going to be and then helping to kind of bridge those with either stairs or blended right yard areas. Looking at this plan here, obviously we are sloping a little bit or actually going up a little bit in this path here. So this path has some incline to it. So you're going to walk in gate right here and then have a little bit of a slope down to the patio area here. All of this in here is in 91.5, 91.5, 91.3. We're pitching away from the house and then we're going to fall this way to 91 and kind of see that this is hitting that 90 elevation right here. So this is the 90 and 92. So 91 line is falling right through here um, on what's existing. But, you know, it's not as relevant for what we're doing in SketchUp. Um, for us, we need to just realize, okay, the patio is flat through here. This to me looks like this is all going to be level with a slight incline here and then a level area here, obviously a level pad for the cabana. And now as we're coming around the side yard, we're going from from this 86 line down to the 76 line and that's obviously why we have two walls here on the outside this is why the art the landscape architect designed these walls in so i can see here that the top of the upper wall is 89 the 89 contour is right here right so it's kind of where the wall ends this is going to compensate for the fill that's going to go in here, right? So thinking about this, we want to kind of level this area off and we want to level it right around the midpoint through this slope through here. So this will be some cut and fill. So it'll get cut a little bit this way and then filled a little bit to the right, right hand side. So the top of the wall is 89, bottom's 85. That means it's a four foot wall. So we're going to have a four foot wall here. And then there's going to be two feet of fall from the bottom of this wall, which is 85 to the top of this wall, which is 83. You're going to have a, a two foot slope here down to this lower wall. And then the bottom of the lower wall is 77. So that'll cover our 10 feet roughly that we were talking about. So the outside here. So I don't have anything modeled in yet. Everything is flat right now. And I just dropped these in here. If we can conceptualize this, this is going to be level here. And then drop this down to where it's going to be. So there's our six foot wall in the front. 
and then this is going to come down and what I would do is just make it level here with this wall and then I would lower it down another two feet and then this has to come down six feet here So this is kind of roughly where our walls would sit. This is going to be level all the way through here, and it's going to hit the, the top of this landing at 89 as well. So this is top of walls 89. It's going to stay 89 all the way through here and then dive here into grade where the grave is going to wrap down around it. So now we have the driveway. So, you know, we talk about putting in the hardscape first and the hard surface areas first. A part of that is I would also put in the driveway first. Now the driveway is not level. The driveway is one of those things that is a hard surface area, but generally we're going to have to follow what the driveway is saying here. So there's also a, a wall on the other side of the driveway and i can see that this wall is not level all the way through yeah the top of the wall and the bottom of the wall i'm not 100 percent sure if it's stepping or if the wall is going to be formed to have slope but it looks like we are going to have this wall all the way almost connecting to this wall and the top of this wall will be 92 then 94 94 94 up to 96 and probably step up somewhere in here 96 looks like some trash storage here and here's the 96 contour where it's going to cross and then it'll probably come back down because the the slope is coming coming down yep 95 93 okay so what's going to happen here is this is going to be a cut situation right so the driveway is coming in and we're going to cut into this grade over here. And this wall is basically going to support the hill that's on that side of the driveway. So the driveway is going to come in where the bottom of the wall reading is. So that's how I know where my driveway height is going to be. My driveway is going to follow bottom of the wall. It's going to kind of be level in this little planting pocket here. And then the wall itself is going to be four feet taller and it looks like five five feet taller in through here so the driveway is going to be a little bit tricky but i'm going to do that first that'll be the first thing that we tackle and i'm going to have to figure out the max on both sides right so i, I need to figure out the lowest point and I need to figure out the tallest point. And then I need to mark some spots along the driveway to help me understand exactly how it's falling. There's also some constants, right? So I have to hit where the garage doors are. That is a constant. I have where it meets up with this little piece of landing here. That's something that I would consider a constant. We have the trash storage, which is also a constant area. And then we have the landing here coming up as well as the road that may fall from one side of the driveway to another. So that's where things get very tricky when dealing with all of these areas where we have to hit our marks, let's say. We're going to get into that in the next video. I just wanted to talk about the concepts in this video, how to look at this. I'm not too worried about all the rest of the contours, right? The contours in the yard. Well, all this is flat, like we said, for the most part, and we can figure out these walls pretty easily. The, the only real challenge here hit our marks all along the driveway so and then from there we can just blend almost like grading right so we can blend our our terrain out off of that and then hit our marks out beyond this i'm going to save that for another video hope that was helpful if you have any questions let me know see you in the next video bye for now